What set off the 1905 Russian Revolution? How similar was it to that which set off the French Revolution of 1789, the July Revolution of 1830, and the 1848 revolutions? These and other questions will be answered right after this. I am Professor Jerome Arkenberg, and I've been teaching a wide variety of history courses at colleges across this country for the past 30 years. In this video, I'm going to tell you about the Russo-Japanese War, Bloody Sunday, and the start of the 1905 Revolution. The spread of the 1905 Revolution after mutinies on the battleship Potemkin at the Kronstadt naval base how the Tsar was forced to call elections for the first Duma and grant Russia's first written constitution, the uprising and crushing of the Moscow Soviet, and the first appearance of Rasputin. At the end, I'll have the wrap-up quote on this video. But first, make sure to click like, share, and especially subscribe and that little bell thingy, so I can continue to bring you more great videos just like this one. In 1904, Russia was attacked by Japan in a surprise attack, and after defeats on land in Korea, Manchuria, and at the siege of Port Arthur, and the destruction of both the Russian Far East and Baltic fleets in two battles in the Tsushima Strait, Russia was humiliated and forced to give up Korea and Manchuria. This decisive defeat suggested the end of the Tsarist state was near. So when, in January 1905, peaceful demonstrators in St. Petersburg, led by an Orthodox priest, Father Gapon, asked for food and work, and were then fired upon by police, killing many, bloody Sunday, protests broke out at once and quickly spread. Strikes and risings occurred all across Russia, especially in Finland, Poland, and the Caucasus. Then, the crews of the Black Sea Fleet, notably on one of Russia's last surviving battleships, the battleship Potemkin, mutinied and shelled Odessa, leading to a general uprising. Simultaneously, the garrison of the Kronstadt naval base outside St. Petersburg also mutinied, and the Tsar's military support seemed gone. In August, the Tsar was forced to dismiss his chief minister, Count Sergei Witt, shown here, and call for elections to Russia's first democratic assembly, the Duma. And here we see a picture of Nicholas and Alexandra opening the first Duma in 1906. But when unrest continued, in October, the Tsar was forced to issue Russia's first written constitution. This was Constitution Day. 
but the workers remained revolutionary, forming themselves, especially in St. Petersburg, the capital, into elected workers' councils, known in Russian as Soviets. Soviet simply means council, which served as surrogate municipal governments during the paralysis of Tsarist government. And these quickly became forums for workers and agitators. In December, after an uprising of the Moscow Soviet was brutally crushed after weeks of street fighting, the Russian middle class, such as it was, became so frightened that they turned back to autocracy, choosing security over liberty. By 1906, order had been restored. So the Tsar, influenced by Count Stolopin, shown here, dissolved the Duma, replacing it with a more conservative one in 1906, and a yet more conservative one in 1907, causing a new wave of strikes and agitation. Stolypin himself was assassinated in 1910. Worse, the Tsar was increasingly dominated by his stubborn and uncompromisingly autocratic wife, who herself quickly fell under the domination of an Orthodox priest, Grigory Rasputin, shown here, who promised to cure the Tsarevich Alexei of his hemophilia, a fatal disease. The wrap-up quote. The first trouble began at 11 a.m. when the Cossacks tried to turn back some thousands of strikers at one of the bridges. The same thing happened almost simultaneously at other bridges, where the constant flow of workmen pressing forward refused to be denied access to the common rendezvous in the palace square. The Cossacks at first used their whips, then the flat of their sabers, and finally they fired. The passion of the mob broke loose like a bursting dam. Men, women, and children fell at each volley and were carried away in sledges and carts. The indignation and fury of every class was aroused. Students, merchants, all classes of the population alike were inflamed. Father Gapon, marching at the head of a large body of workmen, carrying a cross and other religious emblems, was wounded in the arm and shoulder. Those on the other side of the river were arming with swords, knives, and other instruments, and were erecting barricades. The troops were apparently firing in every direction. Kellogg Durand, 1905. Let me know what you think of this quote in the comment section below. Also, what you liked about this video, and what other historical topics or subjects you'd like to see in future videos. Be sure to click like, share, and especially subscribe as it will help me bring you more great videos. And click on that little bell thingy so you'll know when the next History Waits for No One video is posted. If you want to know more, there are recommended studies on this topic in the description below along with other ways to connect with me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the past. <music>